Hey, I'm Robert Evans, and I'm gonna show you six amazing images from photographers around the world. And if you watch until the end, you're gonna see an image of me and my very first celebrity wedding client on I Wish I Took That on the Pixel Show. Hello, everyone. I'm Robert Evans. Welcome back to the Pixel Show. Today, we're gonna to do an episode that I really have fun with because, uh, well, let me just tell you what it's called. It's called I Wish I Took That. I bet you can guess what I'm gonna tell you. Um, but I like to look at other photographers' work for my own inspiration. So I look around and I, I see images sometimes and I'm like, oh my gosh, I wish I took that. So that's where this show came from. So let's go. Um, I wish I took that on the Pixel Show. So before we do it, I just want to draw your attention to some of our previous episodes. Uh, we just did a really cool episode where I shot the 428 at night at Oshkosh during a nighttime air show. Um, you can go back and look at other episodes of I Wish I Took That or The Power of Simple. But anyway, if you're new here, welcome. And here we go. So the first image on I Wish I Took That is a wedding image. I like to start with wedding because I am a wedding photographer or that is my background and what I'm most known for, uh, for a lot of the celebrity weddings that I did. And today, I'm going to show you an image from one of my really good friends and nemesis competition with celebrity weddings, Joe Busink. He's a great guy, an amazing photographer, um, and this is an image that I've always loved of Joe's. Um, and, and if you look at his, it's one of his first uh, image images, not his first image, but one of his first images where he really loved it too. Um, and I just love how you can like look at this image and there's like the, all the, the girls dressing. I don't know quite where this was taken, um, but just this moment, you know, the bride getting dressed. Like, I don't know about you guys that shoot weddings, but I'm usually a little bit more embarrassed in a bride's room than sometimes I think they are. Um, but I'm trying to catch a moment or emotion. But I just really love the feeling of this. The colors, like it's, you know, it's her skin tone is almost the same color as the oranges, you know, at the top of the painting. Um, but Joe's done a ton of celebrity weddings. If you've never heard of him, go to his website, joebusink.com, especially go back and look at his film stuff. Uh, his Instagram, of course, is Joe Busink. Uh, but yeah, he's done a ton of celebrity weddings. Joe and I uh, have battled for different weddings over the years. Um, but he's done more than I have. I just ended up sometimes with the bigger ones, the, the power couples where they're both celebrities. But if you want some inspiring uh, wedding work, go check out some of Joe's work. Okay, next up, we're going to do a boudoir image. Um, now, this image is by a photographer named Carrie Hoffman, and she's out of Los Angeles as well. I don't know Carrie. A lot of these images, I do my research, and I find a lot of beautiful images uh, on 500 pixels. Uh, so if you've never seen that uh, website, go check it out. It's 500px.com. But what I love about this is that this is not your typical boudoir image. Now for me, I've done my share of boudoir. It's not necessarily what I'm known for or what I go after, um, but I love to do it. And I love that this is, uh, it has that feeling of uh, in the girl's home. It was probably done in her place. Um, so it's a little bit incorporated. To me, if I'm going to do boudoir, uh, it, it's all about the location. I need to have like a beautiful location. I don't just want to shoot it on a cute little set or in a hotel room. I want some epic location. Now, this isn't necessarily epic, but I love the, the feeling of this, that it's in her home. Um, and so that's why I really, really like this image. Uh, again, if you want to talk about power of simple techniques, and it's another episode that I do, uh, but she has the foreground of the magazines, and then of course, de and then the and then the subject, of course, your your model or girl is in the background and she's in focus. Uh, so you have middle ground, foreground, background. You have depth of field. You have rule of thirds. Uh, so great composition. So the next image is a portrait image. Uh, now this gentleman's name is Mojlo, Mojlo, I don't know, I'm sorry if I'm, I don't know how to say your name, that's why I put up all their information, but if you want to go look at more of his work, then, uh, he's in Poland, uh, as you can see, and that's his website, M-O-J-L-O dot P-L, and his, uh, 
Instagram is right below my image. So go to his Instagram, like it. But I love this image uh, because again, it's not your typical portrait image. It's sort of street photography uh, slash portrait. I love that he has the model split between the shadow and the light. I love that there's uh, shadows uh, from the laundry that's hanging. I love the lines of how this works. You have the rule of thirds because she's off to the off to the right. You have middle ground, background, foreground with the sheets and the shadows. Uh, everything is just so beautiful about this particular image. Uh, model's just playing with her hair, sort of lost in a moment. Um, there's nothing perfect, yet it's perfect. Uh, I just think this is a really great uh, street portrait uh, landscape type image. Okay, so speaking of landscape, uh, we are going to jump to a landscape image. Now, this is this image reminds me of the image that I use as the lead image for the power of simple because it's just this lone boat in the water. And uh, I've always said, if you, if you want your images to be more powerful, make sure your backgrounds are simple and you can't get much more of a simple background than this. Uh, this photographer, as you can see, is Marco Nuno Fayati. Uh, he's from Portugal, uh, and uh, I could not find a website for him. I did find this on 500 Pixels, but I did find a Twitter account. So if you want to add him to Twitter, if you want to go uh, seek more of his work, you can go to 500 Pixels and do that. But you have the beautiful rope that leads to the boat, so it's drawing your eye right in to the frame. Again, the boat's not centered um, again, if this were image, imagine, just picture this, if the boat were smack dab in the center of the frame, it wouldn't be as powerful. It's how you use negative space that really can make your images powerful. So you have this long rope leading to this boat. You have a reflection here, another way to make your images more interesting. And then there's just the slight bit of color, uh, you know, amongst the sea of, of gray. Uh, you know, and then the reflection, of course, almost looks black and white because the colors are so muted. But I really love this image. Again, to me, the more simple an image is, the more powerful it can be. So when you're composing your work, no matter what you shoot, just always think about how you can simplify your image. Okay, pet. Now, I don't do a lot of pet portraits, um, and this guy has found his niche, Claudio Piccoli. Uh, and he's from Italy, so hopefully I said his name correctly. Um, but if you go look at his website, or uh, if you look him up uh, on 500 Pixels, uh, he has amazing images just like this. And again, what does this image have in common with the last image that I showed you, completely two different subject matters, is his background. His background is just soft. The focus is only on the dog. Um, it's an action shot, so that makes it even more interesting. Of course, he caught the precise moment right before this dog catches the Frisbee. So he's using depth of field. He's using uh, a nice telephoto lens with the beautiful uh, soft bokeh in the background to really help this dog stand out against a very muted, simple background. Nature. Throw a nature image in here today. Now, one of the reasons that I chose this image, uh, this is by Jim coming out of Ottawa, Canada, is because I love loons myself. And I saw this image and uh, I live in Minnesota and I fish all the time and there's always loons out on the lake and I always have my camera with me. And, and I would say in two or three years of this quest, I still don't have the perfect loon image that I would put on my wall. And this probably I would put on my wall. Uh, so maybe Jim will let me buy this, but really I want to take my own loon picture. <laughs> but it's beautiful nevertheless. And again, look at the background. It's so simple. You see the, the stuff floating on top of the water. And one of the tricks about shooting loons is you, you definitely have to shoot them almost in direct sunlight because you want to light that beautiful red eye up. You want to be able to see that. And uh, so uh, I can tell because I'm a trained photographer, that he either shot this at the beginning of the day or early in the morning. And I'm almost going to lead to early in the morning. I could be wrong. Uh, Jim, if you see this episode, because I'm going to tag you on Instagram, tell me if it was late in the evening or early in the morning. But again, beautiful image. The, the loon is framed to the right side of the image. Uh, beautiful depth of field, you know, using a long lens. You almost have to with nature because you can't 
get too close to a lot of animals to get great images. Um, when I fish, a lot of times the looms will come close to the boat, but one of the cameras that I keep with me on the boat is my RX 110 4 because it has a 24 to 600 millimeter lens in it, and then I can zoom way in, and it's light and easy, and I don't have to have my whole camera bag on my boat when I'm fishing. Anyway, TMI, I know. Okay, so let's do a music image. Now, when I do these episodes, um, there's two things that I always like to do. I always like to feature uh, another Sony artisan, so that's what this one is. This one is. This is by Chad Wadsworth, and he's a music photographer. Also a great portrait photographer, but he's known for his music. And this image, how can you not love this picture? Um, it's just, again, so perfect. Um, you can tell that he was on stage because if you look to the top right of the image, that looks like the bass, the, the neck uh, of the bass uh, could be a guitar too. You see kind of the side of the singer and maybe chords in there uh, of the singer. But I mean, this image is all about expression, of course, and the uniqueness of the image itself. Um, and, and it just makes you almost feel like you want to cry, like someone like this never gets an opportunity. I've never crowd surfed. It sure looks fun, but I think like there's no one that could pick me up. <laughs> They're going to be like, Rob, get down. So to pick this guy up and to put him up in his wheelchair and, and that expression on his face and be able to capture this. And again, the beautiful depth of field in this. I don't know what lens he was using. My guess it had to be somewhat of a long lens. But, you know, the hands in the image and the faces in the background and, and just the muted, you know, colors that you get at a concert. This is absolutely stunning. And, and like the title of this show is, I really wish I took that image because it's just amazing. Okay, so one of the other things that I like to do, my second thing is I like to do in this episode, at the end I always include a photographic legend. So anybody know who took this picture? Uh, so today's photographic legend is Herb Ritz. Um, now Herb was an amazing photographer. I really, uh, between he and Annie Leibovitz, I really like loved looking at their work in Vanity Fair and Vogue and other magazines. And I actually was fortunate enough to get to meet Herb Ritz uh, while he was still alive because I had a friend uh, in Los Angeles that actually kind of did his books and I got to go to his Christmas party one year, long story, uh, and I do have a signed book by Herb Ritz, so I really love that and cover that because especially since he was one of my idols and somebody that I looked up to and to get inspiration. Now, uh, so this is, this is Slash, uh, the guitar player from Guns N' Roses, and so I'm going to share with you a little comedy. So if you're laughing, don't laugh too loud as soon as I show you this picture uh, so that I can hear it anyway. I have a little tie to Guns N' Roses because it was my actually my very first celebrity wedding. I photographed the bass player of Guns N' Roses, Duff McKeegan. Uh, this was around 1992, I believe. Uh, they got married in Arrowhead. Um, and this was with me and Duff at the end of the night. And I was a huge Guns N' Roses fan. I loved Guns N' Roses as a kid. And uh, the long and short of it, how I got this wedding, my very first one, is I worked for another studio before I started my business. It was the last studio. And his fiance walked into the studio because it was in the Sherman Oaks Galleria. And she liked my work. And she was talking to her girlfriend. She's like, yeah, I think Duff will like this. And my head went, Vroom. and I was like, what? You know, I didn't say that to her. But then I was like, oh my gosh, is, no. I was like, no, but yes, it was. And so it was a blast. Um, it, was, it was a fun wedding. They just got up there and played and music for like six, not six hours, but probably four or five hours. They just got up and jammed. They didn't play one Guns N' Roses song. Lenny Kravitz was there. All sorts of really cool musicians. So anyway, let's go back to Herb Brits um, because I talked about inspiration. So this is one of Herb Brits's, uh most famous portraits, the one on the left of the models uh, huddled up like that. And and again, I was like, well, what could I do? Like, I don't want to copy people's work, but I get inspiration from it. So I put my own twist on it and I shot five pregnant girls at the same time. So not quite the same thing, definitely different. I didn't try to mimic the pose. I didn't try to do my own thing, but I thought how cool would it be to get uh, five pregnant moms together at the same time? How'd I do this? They were all my wife's friends. And they were all pregnant at the same time. 
So it made it kind of easy. I had to ask and they had to agree to get naked in front of me, but I try to keep it uh, as professional. And, uh, you know, I walked out of the room while they got, I told them how I wanted them. I posed them clothed. And then I walked out of the room. They got in the position. We took some pictures. Boom. You get your inspiration from your heroes and, your, and the legends and, and other people, but definitely go out and put your own spin on it. Um, so that's it. That's another episode of I Wish I Took That. Um, so thank you for watching The Pixel Show. If you want to follow us, then please do. Of course, if you're watching this, you're on YouTube right now, and it's The Pixel Show YT. It's at The Pixel Show at Instagram, The Pixel Show group on Facebook, and The Pixel Show YT on Twitter. And please, 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 if you like this, subscribe, uh, tell your friends, hit that notification button like everybody says, uh, and please comment. I want to know what you liked, what you didn't like, what you might like to see, because I will develop content and do shows for what you guys like. But once again, I'm Robert Evans. I'm your host of The Pixel Show, and thank you for being here.